Hey everybody, Joe from Home Crush here. Every time a new product comes out, half a gajillion YouTubers post essentially the same video on release day. Usually the thingy of the week was sent to them early, for free, and they haven't spent much more than a couple of weeks with it. This is not one of those videos. This is the first of a series of videos in which I share with you some of the worst gear purchases I've made. Stuff I've spent my hard-earned money on, and tried my damnedest to make work, but ultimately removed from my kit. Alright, here we go. Do not buy the Rode NTG2. That wasn't a clickbait title. I'm not luring you into this to then tell you how wonderful it is. The NTG2 sucks. Hard. I bought it over a decade ago. At the time, it seemed to be the best microphone I could afford that did everything I needed. I've been fighting with the NTG2 ever since, blaming anything but the mic for my weak, noisy audio. Now's about the time in the video I should show you the NTG2 and demonstrate why I think it sucks. But I can't because about a month ago I finally got out of my abusive relationship with that long black cylindrical metal turd. When I say don't buy the NTG2, I don't say it lightly. Rode makes a lot of great microphones. You're listening to an NTG5 right now. And if I could only have one microphone, I'd pick the super versatile and great sounding video mic NTG2. Plus you have to give Rode major kudos for supporting filmmakers with their annual Road Reel competition. In short, no one can accuse me of being biased against Rode, but that doesn't change the fact that the NTG2 is a big old bag of hurt. Calm down, Joe, you say. Why do you hate this mic so much, you ask? Three reasons. One, there's no way to turn off the battery. There's not even a power indicator. So you have to remember to unscrew the barrel and remove the battery, or else it quickly runs down. I cannot tell you how many times over the years this has bit me in the ass. It's embarrassing enough to show up on set with a dead battery, but to have it die mid-take is even worse. Now you can get around the battery problem by using phantom power, but there's no getting around the next problem. The NTG2 is an incredibly weak microphone, weaker than any other microphone I've ever used. I kind of wish I still had it so I could demonstrate just how weak it is compared to the NTG5. The NTG5 literally blows it out of the water. We'll just crank up the gain and quit crying, Joe, you say. Well, yeah, you can do that. But remember, there's no free lunch. Here's your noise floor. Here's your voice, your signal. We all wish gain increased signal to noise ratio. That would be magic, but it doesn't. It raises both signal and noise proportionally. So in practical terms, a really weak microphone is a really noisy microphone. Which means the NTG often forces you to do pretty heavy-handed noise reduction in post. And while those tools are indispensable for rescuing bad audio, they're not magic either. There are trade-offs. You shouldn't have to risk weird digital artifacts just to get an acceptable signal-to-noise ratio. Every damn time you record. The NTG2 is stupid weak, and I'm stupid for sticking with it for so long. The final reason I hate the NTG2 is because... It shouldn't even be on the market. I sincerely wish Rode would just take it off their website because I regularly field questions from people looking to buy it. So I know that a lot of poor unfortunate souls are still buying it. If you need a battery powered XLR microphone, Asden and Deity both make better alternatives. And so does Rode with their own NTG4. And if you can live without an XLR jack, then the Rode VideoMic NTG is better in every other way. So let me say it one more time. For the love of all that is good and holy in this crazy mixed up little world of ours, do not buy the Rode NTG2. All right, I feel a little better now. And if I save even one of you from wasting your time and money on this mic, all the better. Now get out there and crush it. Don't buy this microphone. Oh, good job.